Now coming to resuscitation in shock. CPR part is done, but how you are going to do resuscitation in case of shock? First, we'll talk about septic shock in children. In patients with septic shock, it is reasonable to administer either 10 ml per kg or 20 ml per kg fluid bolus with frequent reassessment. Earlier it was 20 ml per kg. Now we say 10 or 20 ml per kg aliquots can be given. Either isotonic crystalloids can be used or colloids can be the initial fluids. Either balanced solution or unbalanced solutions, they can be effective. Providers should reassess after every fluid bolus to see whether the response to therapy has come or not and to check pulmonary edema volume overload to nahi ho so you will need to check for volume overload as well in infants and children who do not respond to fluids you call them as fluid refractory septic shock then you need to consider inotropic agents and the inotropic agents can be either epinephrine or norepinephrine right as an initial vasoactive infusion if epinephrine and norepinephrine are not available then dopamine may need to be considered please be clear that in shock management, dobutamine is not used as a standard therapy. In practice, dobutamine may be combined in special scenarios, but dobutamine will not come in any shock management, at least alone or in the initial part of shock management. Earlier, the concept was warm shock, you will give norepinephrine, cold shock, you will give epinephrine. That concept is becoming more and more outdated. In general, the guidelines are very clear that in post neonatal age children and adolescents the first agent first is fluid fluid to dena after fluid it can be either epinephrine or norepinephrine either of the two can be used if both of them are not available then only you will go in for dopamine and dopamine adequate dose should be used shock doses of dopamine should be used so the shock dose of dopamine is usually between 5 to 15 microgram per kg per minute in no circumstance, it should exceed 20 microgram per kg per minute. Now, resuscitation in shock is continued. Let's talk about cardiogenic shock now. Cardiogenic shock management is tricky. You need, to, if you give too much of fluids, then it is going to cause pulmonary edema. And if you are not giving adequate fluids, the preload may not be sufficient enough. Cardiogenic shock patient need early expert consultation, preferably a pediatric cardiologist. And you need to use a combination of drugs ranging from epinephrine, dopamine, dobutamine or milrinone. But alone dobutamine will not be used. This is a point that you need to remember. It is not mentioned in the protocol. But in other textbooks, it is very clearly mentioned. When it comes to acute traumatic hemorrhagic shock, blood loss has happened. Obviously, immediately blood, nobody will be, you know, carrying the blood in their hands once the child comes. So, you will have to start on the patient on fluids, that is crystalloids. But once blood is available, whenever available, Blood transfusion should be preferred instead of crystalloids for ongoing volume resuscitation. And blood products, PRBC transfusion is always preferred compared to whole blood transfusion.